Hello learners, welcome to Top Notch Online TV, the ocean of knowledge. With me is your chemistry mentor teacher Thaddeus Baluka, the ocean of chemistry. Or walk with me as I try to navigate through the deep waters of chemistry. The topic of interest today is the topic of carbon and its compound. Our subtopic is the oxides of carbon. And we are starting with the carbon four oxide. So again, using the octopus technique, we start by looking at the preparation of the gas. In preparation of carbon four oxide, we start with the reagent. The reagent there that we use is a suitable carbonate and a suitable acid. We can use calcium carbonate and dilute hydrochloric acid. Example, we are talking about dilute hydrochloric acid and calcium carbonate as shown on the diagram of the screen. Once the, once the dilute acid is added from the distal funnel or other dropping funnel into the flask containing the carbonate, a rapid evaporation occurs producing carbon dioxide, which flows through the delivery tube uh, to the distilled water. The first flask we can use, the gas is passed through either distilled water or sodium hydrogen carbonate to absorb any traces of hydrogen chloride gas. Then it is passed through conch sulfuric acid in a flask again to dry the gas and the gas is collected by downward delivery because it is denser than air. There are a few things that you need to understand there. That instead of concentrated sulfuric acid, we can also use an hydrous calcium chloride, but it has to be put in a YouTube. Carbon-4 oxide cannot be dried using calcium oxide because calcium oxide is basic. Therefore, it will react with the acidic carbon-4 oxide. Then remember that there are unsuitable pairs of reagents that you should never use. One is using dilute hydrochloric acid and lead carbonate. This is because the reaction will start, slow down, and stop. This is due to formation of the insoluble lead 2 chloride, which will coat the surface of the carbonate preventing further reaction. The same applies to a reaction between lead carbonate and dilute sulfuric six acid. Again, this reaction will start, slow down, and stop due to formation of insoluble coat of lead two sulfate, which will coat the surface of the carbonate, preventing further reaction. The same scenario, we cannot use calcium carbonate and dilute sulfuric six acid, again due to formation of insoluble cord of calcium sulfate, which caught the surface of the carbonate, preventing further reaction. The same with barium carbonate and dilute sulfuric six acid. Those are questions that you can find in a normal examination setup. We look at the physical properties of carbon dioxide. It's a colorless gas. This is odorless, it is slightly soluble in water, but it is denser than air. And that is why it is collected by downward delivery, or rather by upward displacement of air, because it is denser than air. The chemical properties of combustion, of course, uh, carbon fog there does not burn. But it does not burn, but it does not support combustion. It does not burn and does not support combustion, and therefore that is why it will extinguish a burning splint or lit match, ma ma match stick. Uh, because it does not burn, it will extinguish a burning splint. And a reaction with water, 
carbon four oxide react with water to form carbonic four acid, and therefore it will change a uh, blue little paper red. It will change a moist blue little paper red because it is an acidic gas. Reaction with calcium carbonate. Carbon four oxide react with calcium carbonate. React, reaction with calcium hydroxide, not calcium carbonate. Reaction with calcium hydroxide. Carbon four oxide react with calcium hydroxide to form calcium carbonate, which appears as a white precipitate. If more carbon four oxide is bubbled through the resulting solution, the white precipitate dissolves to form a colorless solution. This is because the carbon four oxide will react with calcium carbonate in, in the presence of water to form calcium hydrogen carbonate, which is soluble. If you eat the colorless solution, the white precipitate reappears. This is because on gentle eating, calcium hydrogen carbonate is very unstable and undergoes thermal decomposition to form the calcium carbonate, which is insoluble, water and carbon dioxide, and that is why the white precipitate reappears. So, and this is now the confirmatory test for carbon dioxide. As shown on the screen, calcium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide, you get calcium carbonate, which is insoluble. It appears as a white precipitate. When calcium carbonate plus water and carbon dioxide react, they get the calcium hydrogen carbonate, which is soluble and appears as a white, as a colorless solution. If the calcium hydrogen carbonate is heated, then it is decomposed to form calcium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water. Therefore, the white precipitate reappears. Reaction with alkalis is just what you have talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, carbon dioxide will react with al any alkali to form the corresponding carbonate and water. Sodium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide, you get sodium. Sodium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide, you get sodium carbonate plus water. Potassium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide, you get uh, potassium carbonate plus water. Calcium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide, you get uh, calcium carbonate plus water. But now if you react any alkali with the excess carbon dioxide, then you get the corresponding metal hydrogen carbonate. And that is why you can be taught in an examination setup to explain how, starting with sodium metal, you can prepare a solid sample of sodium hydrogen carbonate. How do you go about that kind of a question? Because for you to answer that kind of a question, you need to invoke the knowledge acquired under carbon and its compound and the properties of carbon dioxide. So starting with sodium metal, describe how you can prepare a solid sample of sodium hydrogen carbonate. This is how you answer this question. Cut a small piece of sodium metal, dissolve it in a given amount of water to get sodium hydroxide. Then to the resulting solution, bubble excess carbon four oxide to the resulting solution to get sodium hydrogen carbonate. Then, eat the resulting solution to saturation, cool to crystallize. Then you can filter and dry the crystals between filter papers. Remember, you cannot eat it to dryness because the hydrogen carbonate easily decomposes. Now, we can talk about reaction with the burning element or the hot element. Like now, carbon dioxide will react with hot magnesium metal to form a mixture of a white and black solid. This because, and you will be asked this kind of question. We have said carbon dioxide does not support combustion. But when a burning magnesium is lowered, lowered into a gas jar full of carbon dioxide, it continues to burn. The reason is very simple. 
that the heat produced by burning magnesium is so high that it decomposes, it makes the carbon dioxide to dissociate to carbon and oxygen. And it is the oxygen that supports the burning of magnesium. If you don't write the equation, magnesium plus carbon dioxide, you get magnesium oxide, which is white, and carbon, which is black. That is now the, 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 the reaction that takes place when you, when you lower a burning magnesium into a gadget full of carbon dioxide. Then we look at now the uses of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is used uh, in fire extinguishers to put out fires, especially those caused by petrol, oil, and electricity, especially those caused by petrol and electricity. This is because, first of all, you cannot use water to put out fire caused by petrol because petrol is less dense than water. So when you, you pour water, water being denser than petrol, it, 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 it forms the, the, the bottom layer. Then the, the oil or petrol floats and continues to burn. Water is a conductor of electricity. Therefore, cannot be used to put out electric fires. But carbon dioxide is denser than air, so it will form a blanket of, on top of the fire and cutting out the supply of oxygen, and therefore it put out the fire. Other uses of uh, carbon dioxide is used in manufacture of sodium carbonate in solvay process, used in soft drinks as a pre preservative and to also to add flavor. Uh, it's also used in, uh, as a refrigerant because it's used uh, dry carbon fog that is used in um, ice, ice cream, by ice cream vendors in the ice cream boxes. And of course, you'll always be asked why dry ice, which is low solid carbon fog that is preferred to ordinary ice because it is sublime and therefore does not cause wetness or dampness. Note that the questions on uses of, ox of carbon dioxide can be used as follows. First of all, we have said it's used in, man in fire extinguishers because it's denser than air. But someone will also ask you, why we, do we don't use chlorine, hydrogen chloride, nitrogen dioxide, or sulfur dioxide as fire, est uh, 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 as fire extinguishers, or rather in, est in putting out fires, or rather in extinguishing fires. This is because although they are denser than air, they are also poisonous. So if you go to put out fire <laughs> using nitrogen dioxide or chlorine gas, as you put out the fire, you'll also be put out because you'll also be transported to the next destination. Because you'll also die if you inhale the poisonous gases. So in that way, that's why we preferably use carbon dioxide. It is denser than air and it's also not poisonous. It is denser than hair, does not burn, and does not support combustion. Therefore, that's why it is the most preferred in fire extinguishers. Another scenario, an examiner can ask you this question. When cooking, remember the when cooking madazi with with, with chopper madazi baking powder, the immediately you put the duff in a frying pan the dove rises. You note that when the dove is not in the frying pan, it does not rise. So why? Explain three marks. First of all, you have to understand that baking powder contains sodium hydrogen carbon. You start by that. Baking powder contains sodium hydrogen carbonate tick. That's the first marking point. When heated, now, when you put the frying pan, the heat causes the sodium hydrogen carbonate to decompose, to release carbon four oxide, which now makes the dust rise as it forces its way out. That's why when you look at a mandaz, it has the cracks because the cracks was now the, 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 the carbon fog that finding its way out as it caused the mandaz to budge. That is why it appears like that is chemistry. By telling us as uh, baking soda contains sodium hydrogen carbonate, the sodium hydrogen carbonate when heated decomposes to form carbon dioxide tick. 
and then the carbon folk, they will force the dove to rise. If it falls the way, I'll tick, and that is a marking dichotomy, how you are going to get three marks there. Another scenario, you have a soda. Then the examiner will ask you, when you open a bottle of soda, what are the observations? What are the observations? There is a rapid evaporation. There are bubbles. That's the observation. Then you have to explain. This because this because the this because there is carbon fog that which is dissolved under pressure into the soda. So it is released. So the answer is observation bubbles or rather evaporation due to presence of dissolved carbon fog there under pressure, which it is being forced out, or rather it is being released. You're also going to be told to give the reason why we use carbon fog there in soft drinks like soda. There are two things. It adds flavor and also as a preservative. If you are very careful, it is very hard to find a soda which goes bad, which has fermented. So the carbon fog that will preserve the soda. And also, you have also heard people talk about this soda is flat. So if you open a soda and all the carbon fog that escapes and if the soda stays there for one week or three days, then that's when people will test that soda and they say the soda is flat. So, the carbon-4 oxide has flavor. So, the use of carbon-4 in soda are two, preservative and flavoring agent. And we have come to the end of part two of carbonated compound. Keep it here, a top-notch online TV. The one and only uh, educative, educative channel as we continue giving you the best top-notch content. Until next time, bye-bye.